question 44 cashier here we are going to discuss swap future options right and this is about interest rate risk and we are also going to talk about islamic finance the salam contract and the centralized and decentralized treasury department so this question covers a wide range of topics starting with the requirements requirement a based on two hedging choices cash is considering recommending a hedging strategy for 80 million dollar borrowing right support your answer with appropriate calculations and discussions next discuss how centralized treasury department may increase value for cash and the possible reasons for decentralizing treasury department usually i don't go through the theory part but Part B, I will be going because it's very important question. This question has been, I think, two, three times it has come. Centralized and decentralized treasury department. This is a very important theory part. And I cannot skip it. And C, discuss the key difference between a Salam contract and Islamic finance principles and future contracts. This question can be referred to question 41, where, this, where we discussed about borrowing. There also it was an interest rate question on borrowing. But extra thing here is we have swap there we had uh, callers now cash is a large multinational company with number of international subsidiary companies a centralized treasury department manages cash and its subsidiaries borrowing requirements cash surplus investment and financial risk management financial risk is normally managed using conventional derivative credit such as forward features options and swap assume it is first of december 2004 today Okay. And Keshi is expected to borrow 18 million on 1st of Feb 2005 for a period of seven months. It can either borrow the funds at variable rate of LIBOR plus 40 basis point or at a fixed rate of 5.5%. Because we have swap, so they have given both the variable rate. Okay, so they can borrow. Variable rate is LIBOR plus 40 and fixed rate is 5.5 percent LIBOR is currently 3.8 percent okay but Keshi feels that this could increase or decrease by 0.5 percent over the over the coming months due to increasing uncertainty in the market so you have to show the impact of both increase and decrease and this question also partly again go fast because i have covered exactly the same things 41 42 43 they are the same things only right 42 and 43 is about investment 41 was borrowing and this is also borrowing 44 so i can increase my space here and i can go a little bit faster here because the new thing here is the swap okay which is not new but for interest rate we'll see Okay, so the Treasury Department is considering whether or not to have 80 million using either exchange rate and March options or over the counter swap offered by the Ruzo, Ruzo Bank. The following information and course for dollar March options are provided from an appropriate exchange. The options are based on a three month future and futures are always three month. Okay, and 1 million contract size. So contract size is 1 million. Three month future and option premiums are given. Right? This is not future, this is option. Options on future. That's why we have to calculate premium also. Now, option price are quoted in basis point and 100 minus annual percentage yield and settlement of option contract is at the end of March 2005. You know, this is repeated all of the time. How to get the option price? The current basis on the March price is 44 points and is expected to be 33 point on 1st of Jan 2005. 22 point on 1st of Feb 2005, 11 point on 1st of March 2005. So every month it is reducing by 11, 11, 11 points. If you see March 44 points, okay, 33 points 1st of Jan, 22 points 1st of Feb, 11 point 1st of March. So every month it is reducing by 11, 11, 11. And that means 1st of April it will be zero. So, Ruzu Bank has offered cashier swap and a counterparty variable rate of LIBOR plus 30 basis point or fixed rate of 4.6%. So, here the counterparty's variable rate or the fixed rate. You have been given the variable rate and the fixed rate of cashier and the counterparty. 
where cashier receives 70% of any benefit accruing from undertaking the swap prior to any bank charges. That means before taking any bank charges, the gain will be 70% for cashier. The remaining 30% is for the counterparty. So cashier receives 70% benefit. Ruzu Bank will charge cashier 10 basis point for the swap. How many basis point? 10 basis point. That will be the bank charge for cashier. Now, Cash's chief executive officer believes that a centralized treasury department is necessary in order to increase shareholder value. But Cashy News CFO thinks that having decentralized treasury departments operating across subsidiary companies could be more beneficial. So it's like a war going between CEO and CFO. CEO is saying centralized treasury department is better. CFO is saying decentralized is better. CFO thinks that it is particularly relevant to the situation which the Susan company, a company owned by Cash, is facing. Now, Susan Company okay, operates in a country where most companies conduct business activities based on Islamic finance principles. It produces confectionery products, including chocolates. It was to use Salam contract instead of commodity future contract to hedge its exposure to price fluctuations of coca. Salam contracts involve a commodity which is sold based on currently agreed prices, quantity and quality. Full payment is received by seller immediately for an agreed delivery to be made in the future. Right? And the requirement is. So first requirement is which hedging strategy? Options or swap? Second, centralized or decentralized. Third, salam contract and future. So starting with it, first we are going to start with the option. Okay? So cashy and this is a borrowing. So if it's a borrowing, it's a put option. Okay, how many contract 18 divided by 1 million into 7 over 3 because it is it was for 7 months and 3 month is the 3 month is what it is the uh, option period 3 months and it is for the 7 month. How did you get that 7 month here? Right, they have told you somewhere. Right. Yes. 18 million of first of all for a period of seven months. So it is for seven months. Now let's go to basis. See, even though it is option, right? We usually calculate basis under future, but that same we are using for options. But here we don't have future, but still we have to calculate basis. So basis will be your current March future price minus spot. That will be your total basis. So what is your current March future price, right? Why March? That is your opening future price. We are using March, right? Why is it March we are using? Because we are expecting to borrow on 1st of Feb. Right? We have March only. Call or put, it is put. We only have March. We don't have an option here. So March future price minus the spot. Okay. Now, here they have given you the basis point itself. They didn't give you the future price or the spot. You just have the basis itself is given to you. What is the basis as at 1st of December? Why 1st of December? Because today you want to know now. Assume it is now 1st of December. So it has been given here, right? So that is why this question is a little different. Usually we are given the future price, we minus the basis risk and we get the closing future price. But here, opening itself. So the current basis on the March future price is 44 basis points. So that is your opening, right? And at the end, if you see, right, 1st of March, you are having a basis point of, okay, uh, on 1st of Feb, 1st of Feb, you are having 22 points. Okay, yeah. So on 1st of Feb, you want to know. So it is 44 minus 24, still that 22, okay, is, uh, is unexpired. 44 minus 22, okay. 22 is still unexpired. So unexpired basis as at 1st of Feb is 22. Because the basis is 22 at 1st of Feb. So unexpired is the 22. Because at the end, 31st March, it has to be 0. Given in the question. 
okay they have told where they got it now you have to use both the exercise price Let's see okay now here if okay 95.5 option which is 4.5 percent are used okay okay so here there are two exercises price if you see one is at 96 the other one is at 95.5 so based on the first exercise price what will be the percentage they are working as a percentage and there is an alternative situation solution to this as well which i'm not going to teach in this video because i have already explained previously in uh, i think 43 so you can go through that okay the numbers and all you'll be getting the same except that here you are working in percentage alternative solution it is you are working in price monetary value so the LIBOR rate currently is 3.8 percent reduce it by 5 my uh, 0.5 3.3 and 4.3 borrowing from cash is 3.7 and 4.7 how plus 40 basis point that is the borrowing libor plus 40 basis point you add 40 basis points so that it will be the borrowing rate closing future price plus the basis closing future price what is the closing future libor that is 3.3 3.3 plus 0.22 that's why you are getting 3.52 here and likewise for 4.52 also because your basis was 2.0.22 exercise option at 4.5 will you exercise at this okay how do you decide it you can check it in terms of price also in percentage also but we are checking in terms of percentage okay and this is what borrowing you are going for a put option Put option means what you want to go for and you'll be selecting higher or lower higher or lower you are going for a you have to decide on that first okay basically you have to compare your closing future price that is 3.52 and 4.5 percent you will be going for a lower price because you are buying put options okay so when you are buying put options you have to buy at a lower price don't get confused put options is right to sell okay but you are buying that option so to buy that option you will be going at a lower price or in case the other way of inter uh, interpreting this is since this is borrowing right you will go for a lower interest rate so the lower interest rate is this one 3.52 not the exercise price 4.5 that's why you're not exercising second one your exercise price is less then your closing future price 4.5 that's why you're exercising because this is boring you want low exercise lower interest rate right so the premium you have to calculate for both from the table that will be same it will be deducted and then comes your gain or loss no gain or loss in the first one because you are not exercising option second one you're having 0 0.02 because it is 4.52 minus 4.5 and it's a gain of course it's a gain in exercise there will be gain only next net effective annual interest rate how do you get that net effective annual interest rate add all the add 4.7 that is the borrowing rate okay okay for the first one 3.7 plus your premium because this is also a cost and also you have to pay premium also so your total cost will increase that's why your net effective interest rate will increase that's why you are adding both this and this but in the second one, you are deducting your 0 0.02. You are deducting your gain. Okay. Here you are adding both because it will increase your cost. There's an alternative solution. Please go through this. Go through my video, previous videos 43. Okay. I have explained 
there so i'm not going through here here you're working in monetary terms now i'm directly going to swap okay using swaps so cashy will want to swap into fixed rate finance in order to have the risk of interest rate rising okay Cashy will swap for a fixed rate when interest rate increases. This is a borrowing situation. So in borrowing, you are concerned about interest rate fall and interest rate increase. Interest rate increases. So interest rate rises means variable rate is not good. Because if it is fixed, if your interest rate increases, that means your rate is fixed. So Cashy will want to swap into fixed rate. They want variable. Sorry, they want fixed. Okay. So with this type of swap, the outcomes will be as follows without swap okay no swap and with swap okay basically when you work out you should get a gain or a loss okay here they have directly showed you like this okay no swap and with swap how much it is okay but before this it is better to draw a table to decide whether cashy will go for fixed or variable okay so first i'm going to draw cashy and counterparty fixed variable okay now i'm going to go to the case study to see what is the fixed rate for cashy and the fixed rate for this one the counterparty the fixed rate is 5.5 5.5 for cashy and 4.6 okay 5.5 and 4.6 percent and the variable radius okay first i make this table it is not there in your answer but it is better that you do this other so that it makes your understanding of swap easier what is the library you put both the fix basically what you do is first you start put both the fixed rate and both the variable rate of both the company and the counterparty right what is the variable rate for cash it was LIBOR plus 30 basis point no no no, no. it is uh, LIBOR plus 40 LIBOR plus 30 for counterparty So L plus 40. Uh, okay, 0.4 percent. And here it is L plus 0. Uh, it's better I rub it only. Okay. Okay, now it will be L plus 0.3%. Let me check this again. Since I only have the question on the screen, is it correct or not? Right? It is always a good idea or good to check after you write all the figure. Right? It is L plus 40 is correct so this table is correct now what you have to do is find the difference between fixed and variable okay so the difference is 5.5 minus 4.6 it is 0 0.9 percent the difference in fix and the difference between this both is 0 0.1 percent right if you see Counterparty is producing, it's uh, having both fixed and variable at a lower rate compared to cashy. Cashy is having a higher fixed rate and also higher variable rate compared to the counterparty. But you have to see which of this is the bigger percentage. This and this. 0 0.9. That means counterparty. Counterparty has 
a comparative advantage in the fixed rate because this fixed rate is much lower than the cash rate compared to the variable rate the difference is only 0.1 the bigger difference you have to see 0.1 or 0.9 the bigger difference is 0.9 that means counterparty is having an advantage in fixed rate compared to variable rate both fixed and variable are being produced uh, they are at a lower rate for counterparty but they are having an advantage in fixed so counterparty will go with when this swap counterparty will go for fixed and cashy will go for variable right but here they are saying no swap okay no swap cashy so they are only writing for the cashy company that's why they are writing it one side okay they are not writing it for the both the sides usually we when we study also we study for both cashy and counterparty so it's better that you do this table then come to cashy okay uh, then write without swap without swap you will take which is not good like which is a disadvantage so that means without swap cashy will go for fix right 5.5 okay about counterparty counterparty i'm showing both okay and he will go for l plus 0.3% without swap okay and when you add both right both this column should be added this is for uh, cashy this is for counterparty when you add both it will be l plus 5.5 plus 0.3 percent but without swap okay now you take without swap sorry with swap i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry to find the game you have to find with swap so with swap we have just decided he will go for fixed he will go for variable so cash he will go for l plus 0.4 percent he will go for 4.6 percent now add okay this third is the total column basically so l plus 0.4 plus 4.6 is 5 percent so when you take the difference it will be 0.8 percent this is the gain if you see the gain also this is the gain total gain okay this they are taking it in the percentage of 70 for cashy 70 percent only they are taking which is 0.56 if you see this one the gain to cashy okay so now with swap okay they are writing only for cashy because they only want to know for the cashy right that was that the question let us go discuss how uh okay for yeah 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 you have to decide for uh, for cashy which is the better hedging strategy so have our option so you are only working for the cash cashy they didn't tell you to work out the whole table and all so without swap it is this okay with swap if you see they are taking this l plus 0.4 just now we saw and it will be in bracket because we are paying fix rate what is the fixed rate paid? Who is paying that fixed rate? This counterparty, 4.6, right? And what is the floating rate received? Okay. This is this floating rate. They are going to receive this rate, right? Under swap, they are going to pay who? Cash is going to pay LIBOR plus 0.4. Okay. Counterparty is going to pay the fixed rate, and this will be received from the counterparty, right? Counterparty L plus 0.3%. This is going to be received. And then what is the net cost pre fee? Right? basically you just take all this okay libo plus 0 0.4 plus 4.6 it is libo plus 5 percent then libo plus 5 percent deduct this okay deduct this libo plus 0 0.6 you are only left with 
4.7%, it will be bracket again because you are going to pay it. It is before paying fees. Then you take the gain, which is 0 0.8. From this gain, only 70%, which is 0 0.56. Now, what you have to do is before, okay, no swap minus gain. It is your outcome, this 4.94. Okay, 4.94%. That is your pre fees. After your fees, which is 10 basis point, add your fees with this outcome pre fees 4.94. So this is your outcome post fees. Okay, if you want to, if, if I want you to show how you, how this is LIPO plus 0.3%, okay. We have this table. We usually do this table. Okay, I will show you this side also. Okay, so usually the gain to cashy will be 0 0.56 and 0 0.24. Okay, uh, let me do this. I'm not going to show you the whole table. Okay. I will see whether you understood this or not. How this, how we are receiving that floating rate LIPO plus 0 0.3. If you haven't, then you can comment me down below. Okay. If any one of you didn't understand this part, I will make a separate video and I will explain the whole thing. Okay. That's swap. So I'm leaving it here. Now let's go to the discussion and recommendation and each choice the interest rate cost to cash. So they are giving the summary like table. Okay. What happened when you do nothing? When what what happens when you take this option and one swap? Okay. Is there any uh, thing why they have taken hold of this option? Okay. Okay, they are assuming that taking this option. 95.5 the reason it is 4.5 okay and the reason is this 4.5 it is closer to this 3.8 plus 40 base it is closer to 4.2 because usually what happens is this is not very clear that why they have taken this okay this option only usually what happens is you have to calculate under both the exercise price so make sure that under the other exercise price also you calculate it which is 96 okay because that thing is not very clear why they have taken this option only so doing nothing what happens when interest rate increase and rise Okay, and by the way, for swap, it will be this only. Same. So now you can see what is which, which one is having the lowest interest rate. It is 3.7 percent. This and the highest is again this. So borrowing at the floating rate and undertaking a swap effectively fixes the rate of interest at 5.0% for the loan which is significantly lower than the market fixed rate of 5.5%. Okay. Now on the other hand doing nothing and borrowing at the floating rate minimize the interest rate at 4.7% against the next best rate which is the swap. If interest rate increased by this one and should interest rate decrease then doing nothing and borrowing at a floating rate minimize cost compared to next best rate which is 95.5 option. One on the face of it doing nothing and borrowing at a floating rate seems to be the better choice. If interest rate increase or decrease by small amount, but if interest rate increase substantially, then this choice will no longer be result in the lowest cost. Swap minimizes the variability of the borrowing rates while doing nothing and borrowing at a floating rate maximizes the variability. See, if you take swap, okay, that changes that variability of the borrowing rate will minimize. But if you are not doing anything and borrowing at the floating rate, it is risky that it keeps on changing. If cashy wants to eliminate the risk of interest rate fluctuations completely, then it should borrow at the floating rate and swap it into fixed rate. Now coming to part B. Part B centralized or decentralized. This question try to get points from here. Try to copy paste it. Okay, so a centralized treasury department should be able to evaluate the financing requirements of cashies group as a whole. 
and it may be able to negotiate better rates when borrowing in bulk. Everything which is in bold has to be there. Department could operate as an internal bank and undertake matching of funds. Okay. Therefore, it could transfer funds from subsidies which have spare cash resources to ones which need them and thus avoiding going into the costly external market to raise funds. These are the advantages of centralized treasury department. The department may be able to undertake multilateral internal netting and thereby reduce costs relating to hedging activity. Experts and resources within one location could reduce duplication costs. Concentration of experts and resources within one central department may result in more effective decision making environment, high quality risk monitoring and control, further having access to cash group and tie access. Entire cash funds may give company access to large and more diverse investment markets. Now coming to decentralized. Decentralized uh, treasury function to a subsidiary companies may be beneficial in several ways. What are those ways? Each subsidiary company may be better placed to take local regulations and customs into consideration. An example is the case of Susan companies need to use Salam contract instead of conventional derivative product, which the centralized treasury department may use as a matter of course. Giving subsidiary companies more autonomy over how they undertake their own fund management may result in increased motivation and effect effort from the subsidiary senior management and thereby increase future income. Subsidiary companies which have access to their own funds may be able to respond to opportunity quicker and establish competitive advantage more effectively. Try to get these points. Advantages and disadvantages of centralized and decentralized. Coming to Islamic contracts, Salam contract, part C. Islamic principles stipulate that need to avoid uncertainty and speculation. Islamic finance wit need to avoid and speculation. These are the two things which Islamic finance do not promote. One is uncertainty, one is speculation. You have, okay. The need to avoid uncertainty. So in the case of Salam contract, payment for the commodity is made at the start of the contract. Buyer and seller of the commodity know the price quality and the quantity of the commodity and the date of future delivery with certainty. Therefore, uncertainty and speculation are avoided. On the other hand, future contracts are marked to market daily and this could lead to uncertainty in the amounts received and paid every day. So in one paragraph, you're talking about the Salam contract, the Islamic finance, that it avoids speculation and uncertainty. Second paragraph, you're talking about future, that it is market to daily, because of this, it is uncertainty the amounts received and paid every day. Furthermore, standardized future contracts, you see, it is in bold, have fixed expiry days and predetermined contract sizes. This may mean that underlying position is not hedged or covered completely by leading to limited speculative positions, even where the future contracts are used entirely for hedging purposes. Even sometimes what happens is when you're using future for the hedging purposes, there are chances that you're using it for speculation purpose. This is not uh, done in Salam contract, that there's a difference. Now, finally, only a few commodity future contracts are offered to cover a range of different quality grades for a commodity and therefore price movement of the future market may not be completely in line with the price movement in the underlying asset. Right? So that's it for this. Right? Again, I will take a few time, maybe one minute. Just give me so that I know why they're using that exercise price. Because usually when they give some answers, there's a reason why they haven't taken the other exercise price. That uh, this 4%. Just check what happens when you increase and decrease. So if you take the next one and increase or decrease it, it will be um, no here. It will be 4.5 and 3.5. Okay. OK, 
okay if you are using it at four percent okay four percent there is no reason like that try to include both okay try to include both exercise price and work it out so that's it for this video and do wait my next video which will be a question 45 thank you and take care